sorry to leave you hanging so long. Well, you know, real life gets in the way. But, uh, here we are, middle of April. It's time to do an all-wheel drive swap. As you can see, I went ahead and got this thing all jacked up. It's out of the way, off to the side of the garage where it won't really be in the way when it's half and, you know, apart with no drivetrain on it. And it's blocked up very solidly. One thing I can't stress enough when working under cars is to make sure it's solid. So there's a jack stand on both sides and funny story about that. When I went to put the jack stands under this part here in front of the toe arm or uh, I can't remember the name, name of it anyways where I usually put the jack stands on my car when I lift the rear end up and I started setting it down the jack stand actually went right through the car so yeah it's a, it's a little ripe under there so I went ahead put this 2x12 which spans all the way across underneath the pinch welds which is sitting on concrete blocks and then there's also blocks of wood underneath as a secondary just in case Anyways, we won't be long getting the parts off of this this is the quick part so hang around and uh, We'll get this started. So a quick summary of what we need to do here. We need to get the rear subframe off. That's an obvious because that's what ha houses the rear differential and the control arms, the axles, everything. Uh, we need to take the all-wheel drive gas tank off because it's different. The front-wheel drive doesn't have the, the tunnel down the center of it for the drive shaft and exhaust to pass. Look, got dogs. Dogs are great. As I was saying, after the gas tank, then uh, we also need to remove the uh, carrier brackets for the drive shaft. They're just uh, spot welded to the sub for, or to the uh, the chassis. So if you have a spot weld cutter, that goes really quick to get them off. There's about 10 spot welds on each one, drill those out, they come right off, and uh, for the most part that's all you need on here. Right boys? They're enjoying this nice 50 degree weather as well. So, with everything shut down there's not a lot else to do other than uh, work on race cars. I'm going to try my best to show every detail as best as I can. Uh, some shots like underneath the car will probably be fairly hard to shoot but what I'm going to try to do is I've got the uh, head mount for my GoPro now so hopefully I can wear the GoPro while underneath the car and show what I'm doing and try my best. It's really not that complicated. Uh, it'll be a little more complicated when we start putting it in the other car. So here we go. Okay. First things first, we gotta get these ugly ass wheels off. Which are tighter than I thought. These blocks here aren't the ones hold aren't the, the backup, it's these big boys.
Okay, the next thing I'm going to try to undo is either the tops of the uh, upper control arm here, or maybe maybe I'll undo the struts inside. Got a couple screws to get out there. That gives you the access to the top of the strut tower. And at the rears, you've got two 14 millimeters. Pull the uh, boot off there. Alright, so now both struts are disconnected from the shell. These bolts are a little A little bit rusted, so I may have to go all right. So, those bolts are 14 millimeters as well, but they're covered in paint and rust. So, a little trick is to go with a 916, which is ever so slightly larger, and we can get a better grip. Two swivel extensions does wonders.
That one was a little bit uh, difficult, but nothing a little persuasion couldn't get out. So now the knuckles are disconnected. These bolts are a little rusted. May have to give it a little more persuasion. There we go. These bolts have never been out before, so this car has seen some salt running. Repeat on side two. I probably should have undid these ones first. Oh, we'll get it.
the next thing I've got to do is disconnect the drive shaft and also the e-brake cables. These have to come out. You need to disconnect them inside the car at the e-brake lever and fish them out through the shell. All right, so let's get out those e-brake cables. Luckily, the seats are not bolted in. So your e-brake cables come underneath the carpet. And it looks like we've had some rodents in here or something. Now you can see the e-brake cables come out one on either side and they join together right here with one nut. So I'm actually going to release it. A lot of times you can undo this right with your fingers, it's not usually tight. And you have to use the e-brake cables from the all-wheel drive because the front-wheel drive ones are not the same. So now two bolts take out there and this bushing kind of pops right out. it for that. They may actually, yeah, I don't, you don't need to move the uh, airbag computer, but sometimes it makes it a little easier. You can just spread these clamps apart. And usually, if I get a screwdriver, you can usually just pop these out. Mind you, they've been in here forever. I may get a 10 millimeter and pop this SRS computer out. bit difficult. There we go. And under there are more 12 millimeters. Which are pretty tight apparently. likelihood of actually undoing these bolts is not very likely. I mean this one here, I'll just take the whole thing. I 
all you guys in the south don't really know what a northern car is like. This should be a 12 as well, but there's so much rust and corrosion. Getting a socket on. Yep. Oh, wow. I really didn't think that would come. Keep your eyes away. Put your safety squints on. That is amazing. I really didn't think that bolt would come out. Just gonna try not to get tetanus here. Looks like the whole bracket is rotted right off. Yeah, we'll deal with that. These are some of the things you're going to run into when you start stripping a car. And there's one more up here. Which I probably won't be able to get, I doubt. This one feels pretty crusty. This one comes, I'll be amazed. Oh, there goes the whole bracket. Something's turning. I knew it. Just fine. Those clamps are rusted right out. I had a similar issue when I did mine. So now. Pull the brake cables out. And we'll repeat the process on the other side. a little joiner plate between the two cables. It's got to come out far enough so you can disconnect them. The joys of working in the dirt. I'm gonna have a lift one of these days. Getting too old for this. for two? Probably not. Nope. This one's gonna break. Nope. Oh, wow. I didn't foresee that one coming at all. Really didn't see that coming. It was close. What about this one up here? What do you think? I don't think so. And while I'm right here, this is also where we need to disconnect the fuel line. Wow, we may get lucky on this side. Wow, 
I am impressed. Three for three. Nope. The bolt broke off though, which is fine. Still gets us where we need to be. Disconnected on both sides, so now I can push the cables through from inside. screwdriver Alright, I'm gonna get rid of that plate. One bolt broke off. It's cold today. Not nearly as warm. That's the uh, airbag computer. You got to take that out to get to the e brake cable. Yep. So now those can push through. Yep. Everything's disconnected underneath. What's that? In the regulars in the tank. It's like, yeah, it's the thing that bolts on, so yeah. if yours is oh, still yeah, good. Should be the same thing anyway. They're Should all, be. They're all yeah. the same, I think. For the most part. Turbo pressure washer on me. Oh, I can bring it next day or whatever. Supposed to have snow right. snow tomorrow. Yeah, so yeah. yeah. Let me just get this one out and then you can take that one off. Oh, I'm gonna need it for a second more. I thought it was gonna come, but yeah, the order of parts has been shipped out. It might come tomorrow, hopefully. Yeah, I'm kind of cold. I don't know. Yeah, it feels right. damp in the air. It is. It's in. colder now than it was earlier today. Yeah, it was kind of shady. It was cold. Like my jacket on the sun. I thought these were 14s or 12s. It's been a while since I took the drive shaft off. I did it eight years ago. Yeah. Uh, there's a screwdriver, I think. I put a bunch of tools up on the edge up here. I think there's a screwdriver up there. These bolts thrown in the seat here? Wherever. Don't need this, 
If you got the brakes off and the drive shafts off, uh, that's pretty much it. The subframe's ready to come down. How about the gas tanks? Gas tanks after after the drive shaft. Yeah. Or yeah, after the dip. To, to top anyway, right? Yep. Yeah. I don't want to loosen anything. So then we got E brakes are off, these are off, struts and everything are disconnected, so there is a wire here for the ABS, but I don't I don't know if your car is even ABS, is it? I think there's a plug on top of the subframe, so when it comes down, I can unplug it from up there. See on both these two right here? Yeah, there's there and yeah, up there. I think there's 17s. What's that? It's not bad. We'll go right under the rear diff. Hopefully the jack goes high enough. Of course there would be a root right there. That's what it'll be. It's not that heavy anyways. I think that's up there. Not bad, it's just just to get it started. Well oh shit, you hide up in there too big match, right? That's one. Gotta get it out of there now. I had to jam it in there. It's probably gonna be the same. Loosen this one, but not take it off fully. It's most of the way off. Yeah, my impact keeps sticking like that. Coming that bad though. 
I had to work pretty hard on the uh, lower toe arm on the other side. That one came hard, but the rest were all good. It's not as bad as I would have thought for how rusted the car is underneath. Yeah, it's sitting that long as well, right? Yeah. That's it, it should come down. Yep, it's, yep, take the other, that last nut, or nut on the other side is just on by a couple threads. <clears throat> Don't lose that nut either. <laughs> okay, so you're gonna hold that side and just kind of balance it. It should come down. May have to wiggle a little bit. There it goes. Which one? No. Yeah, they move in there a little bit. It's a. Okay. All right. It's pretty heavy, so. The wire is pretty long. Are you caught up there somewhere? Mm -hmm. Oh, the calipers. There we go. My my side's good. There, it's Didn't that. Keep much. No, just enough to catch. Oh, this line right here. Yep, unplug that. That's your ABS plug. It's probably gonna be stuff. Yeah, it's on there pretty good. There we go. All wheel drive subframe out. I think we'll take the Try to take the struts off right now, if possible. I don't know. Yeah, there's a bolt at the bottom. I'll see if that'll come. If not, we'll leave them on. But it'll be a lot easier to get this out of under here yeah. without it. If they'll come. Yeah. I don't think these struts have been on here that long. So. Oh. Yourself. Pinch my finger. Yeah. yeah. These weren't on that long ago. The other thing is actually getting it off. It's like on a stud, and sometimes they stick on that stud. Can you? This one's coming. There we go. KY. KYB. Yeah. Those are not bad. Just need a little cleaning. They're not that old. I just use that bar. I just put it against the edge and tap it off at the top. It should slide right off. When I did mine, one of them was seized. I spent about two hours getting one of them off. We'll, we'll see if we can pull this out from under there. Size matter, don't we? No, there's so. Let it, yeah, let it roll forward a little bit. I'll take the jack right out and just drag it out. There. Ready? We'll carry it over. It ain't light. No.
There we go. One all-wheel drive subframe. Okay, so day one. Subframe's off. Struts are off. Now it's time to clean this up and uh, continue on. Thanks for uh, tuning in. That's day one of the all-wheel drive swap. Well, really getting into the all-wheel drive swap now, so uh, stay tuned. We'll continue on this and get this car up and going.